let's move on to, to Leonard Skinner then, where we began. I mean, you, you, you're on tour at the moment with ZZ Top, uh, the Sharp Dressed Simple Man Tour. A brilliant name. Just tell us a little bit about this tour and, and where did that name come from? Whoever, whoever dreamt that up was fantastic. Uh, I wish I could take credit for the name, yeah. but, you know, they, they combined Sharp Dressed Man and Simple Man, and there you are. Um, the tour is, is going wonderfully well. It is a co-headliner tour. And what's great about this tour is there's enough common thread. Uh, you know, they're, they're two classic rock era bands. A lot of the fans that love ZZ love Skinner. So um, uh, people are very, very happy to, to come to this event. And um, we have, have toured many, many times in the past. In fact, my very first tour with Skinner, which was back in 1999, was a double bill tour with ZZ Top. <laughs> and to go back even further than that, I've known the ZZ Top guys since Damn Yankee days oh. because they used to come out and see Damn Yankees play. Um, so, you know, everyone in the two camps uh, are, are all great old friends. Um, we're having a great time on this tour. We've been working the entire month of March and we're working all of April. And then we, we go off on our own for a bit and then we pick up again all of August, all of September working together. And it's just, it's a great night of music and uh, uh, um, we're having a great time doing it. And I should mention what has become very fun We've only done it now for about a week, but um, Billy Gibbons, the brilliant iconic guitarist of ZZ Top, is getting up on stage with Leonard Skinner and playing Call Me the Breeze. Oh, very cool. And the crowd goes crazy when that happens. I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. And as you said there, your, your first tour with Leonard Skinner was 1999. That's a, a quarter of a century ago, which is pretty insane to think. I mean, um, how did you become involved with, with Leonard Skinner? Was it Ron Nevison? <laughs> it was Ron Nevison. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I, I think I need to send him a fruit basket. <laughs> yeah. Fairy um, godmother. Yeah. <laughs> truly. Uh, Leonard Skinner and Dan Yankees actually shared the stage a few times in the early 90s. So I've known the Skinner guys socially a long, long time. And um, in 1998, Tommy Shaw had recorded a solo album. Um, and he asked me to play on that album, which I did. Um, Seven Deadly Zens is the name of that album. And the drummer from Styx, the brilliant Todd Circleman, and I shared drumming duties on that album. Um, Tommy had the opportunity to go out and tour for a few weeks to support that record. So he asked me to do the tour. The tour was opening for Leonard Skinner. <laughs> so unbeknownst to me, as we're doing that tour, the Skinner band members are watching our show thinking, oh, you know, that, that that's the kind of drummer we want for the band. I knew none of this. <laughs> However, um, we finished that, that tour, Tommy Shaw opening for, for Leonard Skinner. And then I get a phone call from Nevison who says, uh, hey, I'm in the studio. Um, I'm producing a Skinner album. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I know you know all of these guys, so why don't you just come down to the studio to hang out one day socially? Which I did. And, um, and that day Ron said, you know what? Um, we're going to need percussion on this record, which would be the, you know, the frosting on the kick. <laughs> so the... The, the tambourine and the cowbell and all the, all the little last minute, you know, uh, um, sweetening that you do. So Ron hired me to play percussion on the record Edge of Forever. And this is it. Then came 
to me and said, you know what, we're looking for a new drummer. Are you interested? And I was. And 26 years later, here I am. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Incredible stuff. I mean, uh, how what is it like then? I mean, because obviously Leonard Skinner is a, a heritage band. They've been going for, like you say, 50 years, and they've, they've got some some of the biggest classic rock anthems going, and you're there playing that stuff for the last 20 years, and the fans are lapping it up. What's it like to be part of a band like that then? It's wonderful. You know, um, I should mention, Paul, that I, uh, as, as a 13-year-old kid, was playing in bands with other school friends, literally playing Give Me Three Steps, Freebird. So none of this is lost on, on me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I realize how lucky, fortunate, blessed I've been to, you know, fast forward a bunch of years, I'm actually in the band and I'm playing Freebird in front of 20,000 people right across the street in a few hours. And um, it's just, it's been an amazing experience to, to play this music that has stood the test of time. Um, that is part of here in America. It's part of our pop culture, you know, sweet home, Alabama, Freebird. I mean, th these are iconic songs, and um, uh, uh, you know, to be able to do this, it's 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 so wonderful. And you know, last year we lost Gary Rossington, rest in peace. Gary was the last original member, so th there are not any original members in the band now. However, I've been there twenty six years. Johnny Van Zant, the younger brother of Ronnie, has now been singing in the band 37 years. Ricky Medlock, the brilliant guitarist, has been in the band 28 years in this era, but was in the original band in the early days playing drums when they were still playing clubs and recording demos. Um, so we have enough of a through line, I think, um, from the band's early days to now, that uh, that I I feel that we, with integrity, um, are 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 carrying the torch, and keeping the music and all those wonderful people alive that created it. Absolutely, and as you say, you got twenty thousand people coming to see you every night and things like that. So the music is still there; it's still loved. But um, does 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 it hurt? Does do you get offended when people say things like it's it's just a tribute band now because it's not the original members? No, I, I don't, because um, we are paying tribute to the band. And, you know, when I joined the band in 1998, there were three original members in the band. Billy Powell, Gary Rossington, and Leon Wilkeson. And, um, you know, with a band that goes back that long, sadly, you know, people are going to pass away and and replacements are unfortunately going to have to step in zz top who we're playing with tonight they lost dusty hill their bass player and so now you have frank beard the drummer and billy gibbons the guitarist from the original band but dusty rest in peace is gone but they are carrying on their legacy. They continue to play just as we did. So, you know, uh, when I joined the band about two years later, Leon Wilkinson passed away. But the band continued on and we brought in someone to play bass. And then another eight or nine years later, Billy Powell passed away. But the band continued on and we found a new piano player. And then last year, Gary passed away um, and we found another guitarist. But this only happened because the estates of all of the former original members wanted us to continue and wanted us to keep the music and these wonderful people alive. So I, I do not um, I do not blame uh, uh, 
any, any anyone out there that that feels well that's not the original band that's just a tribute band that's that's fine you know they, they're entitled to that um it's the people that are coming out to still see us play who are loving the music and still appreciating the fact that we're keeping the music alive and um and i'm happy and i'm appreciative appreciative to them for doing so